morning, everybody. I just have a couple things that's on my mind that I definitely want to discuss before we go into episode five. Yeah, episode five of our series. First thing is, as you notice, we've made some some adjustments based upon the uh, recommendations by the CDC. Uh, so y'all can't be sitting all up on top of each other like y'all usually do and <laughs> hugging up and kissing and all that stuff. Uh, we, uh, I, I just, I, I think the thing that is really, really on my mind is uh, this week a lot of folks were talking about being fearful uh, and I just want to throw my half a cent in on, on, the, on the fear factor. Sometimes what we do is to prove that we're not scared, we do stupid stuff. Yeah, well. And so I don't, I don't want us to run outside without no coat on in 32 degree weather just to prove that we not scared of a virus, all right? Uh, I want us to be wise individuals. I want us, if we know that we have some type of respiratory condition, that we take the appropriate measures to protect ourselves from getting anything into our lungs that will cause complications. Right. I, I just, I don't want us to try to prove that we're Christians by doing something stupid. Okay. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, the, and that's the, the attempt. What I, I actually was not going to do, well, I still might because I, I can feel it coming on now. But uh, I, I, I was just kind of talking to God this morning. And the thing that kept going through my mind, because I'm, 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 I'm looking at folks get upset because of this current situation. Now, I just want to, my, from my perception, of what's going on. This is a virus just like any other virus, number one. It is no different than the usual flu that comes around this season, number two. But now the difference is we do not totally understand it. And when we don't totally understand something, we have to take precautions. When we don't know how to, if we don't know how to understand something or we don't know how to control something, we have to do things to mitigate the ability of it to travel at a high rate of speed. For instance, this virus has the ability, we, we don't know how long that it can survive outside the body because a virus needs a host in order to survive. Right now the estimation is between two and 14 days. So if somebody sneezes on a counter or sneezes in front of you, we're not sure how long that virus stays in the air before it dies. And that's why we have to do these mitigation things. So I don't want us to be like, oh, you can just sneeze on me. I'm, plug, pl I'm protected by the blood of Jesus. All right? <laughs> now, when you're in the hospital on a ventilator, we're going to still come and plead the blood of Jesus over you. But I'm going I'm to I'm ask God to give you a spirit of wisdom so that you don't do nothing like that again. Amen. Because we have to be wise on how we conduct ourselves. Yes. The other thing that I want to mention is the fact that because of this, uh, we've heard different folks talk about don't you know don't get yourself in uh, in alarm about this situation. It's just another. It's just like the flu. It is similar to the flu, except with the flu, we have understandings of certain aspects of it that we can control. Everybody with me? Yes. The flu will, or has, over all these many years, caused people to die. And right now, the amount of folks that are dying from the normal flu and are dying from the uh, coronavirus is... The coronavirus is, is minimal compared to the amount of folks that die by the flu. However, because we don't understand the mitigating factors on how to control it, that it has the potentiality to exceed what a flu virus can do. Right. So we have to do things in order to make sure that it does not get itself in a position 
So like it happened in China where it just went like wildfire all of a sudden. We have to do those type of things. Right. I know folks are concerned about uh, employment. Uh, uh, I know folks are concerned about the babysitting service. I mean, the school system. Um, you know, folks is like, you know, I got to take off if they close the schools because I don't have nobody to watch my children. But, and see, it's, it's got, but right. some of the things we need to do in order to make sure that we can eradicate this, the, this virus ability to spread and we can, can kind of understand how it travels so that we can adjudicate it appropriately. Y'all with me still? That's why, if you notice, uh, the WHO, the World Health Organization said, if you gotta shake hands with somebody, just fist bump them, right? They start making adjustments because we don't totally understand. Um, in China, they say don't even touch your hands. You, you, mm -hmm. kick, you do the uh, kid and play and touch feet, right? Mm -hmm. You know, things are being put into effect because we have to get this right. Now, I wanna, I'm gonna say this, and I'm probably gonna say it, end up saying it funny, but, but it's, it's serious, all right? Hand sanitizer is not as good as washing your hands. That's right. Amen. Okay? I'm going to say it one more time. Hand sanitizer is not as good as washing your hands. You need to put some soap. I heard somebody say it. You need to do some soap, some water, and some effort. Okay. All right? They said that they want you to wash your hands for 20 minutes. Um, oh, Lord, not 20 minutes. For 20 seconds. All right, and don't do it, on, listen, don't do it under no cold water, all right? Put it on some nice warm water, wash your hands. Uh, Lady Yolanda's telling me that Dr. Oz says that you make sure you do every one of your fingers, your thumb, in between all that, do all of it, okay? Uh, somebody, just, somebody else just said, make sure you do all the way down to your wrist. Like now, don't be taking no bath in the bathroom now. That, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying just your hands. Don't be getting all excited and then start trying to do up your arm. And I, I want us to be healthy, okay? And it, and it requires us to do certain things. We are blessed that we are, we are not over 250, so we are, we are actually authorized by the CDC to have service. You know, um, a couple of a couple of the, uh, newsletters and, and, and churches that I subscribe to are larger than that, and some of them are doing online only. Some of them are doing uh, abbreviated services. Some, you know, they have to they have to make provisions because we don't under, totally understand this, and if, because we don't totally understand it, we got to take the provisions so we don't cause it to spread even more. All right. That's all we need now is, you know, certain church got it, and because a certain church didn't listen to nothing the CDC said, now a whole state has it. Mm -hmm. We don't need that kind of thing going on. But the, I said all this to get to this part. Jesus had just got baptized, and the Bible says that the Spirit told him to go out into the wilderness, and he walked around in this wilderness for 40 days. And I don't know if anybody has ever gone without eating for 40 days, but you'd be kind of hungry after 40 days and not eating. Y'all probably be hungry for going 40 minutes, but I ain't going to talk about nobody. I'm looking straight ahead. You look straight ahead. Nobody know I'm talking to you, right? But during, at the end of that time period, it says that the devil shows up and starts talking to Jesus. The first thing he challenged him on was his hunger. And he said, why don't you turn these stones into bread? And Jesus said, I ain't doing it. I know I'm modifying it. I know, I know, I'm modifying it. He then takes him and he says, I tell you what, the Bible says that if you get cast down, that the angels will take you up lest you cat, uh, dash your foot against the stone, Psalms 91, which is everybody, everybody talking about Psalms 91 right now. I, kind of, I think that's why it's kind of on my mind. And Jesus looked at him and said, you don't tempt God. And that's the thing that keeps going on my mind right now. If the word of God says you don't tempt God, the word of God by doing something that you know is not rational, then why would we try to tempt God and say, I ain't worried about no virus 
because I got the blood of Jesus. Y'all not catching what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Jesus, who is the word of God, yes, he is. who said, who did not deny that the Bible says that Psalms 91 does say mm -hmm. that he will catch you lest you dash your foot against the stone, said, I'm not going to jump off of here because I'm not going to tempt God to validate his word, That's right. even though he knows God's word is true. Because he is the word. Somebody just trying to help me out and said he is the word. That is exactly right. <laughs> so we don't get ourselves in situations and conditions that cause us to try to tempt God to prove to everybody else that God is real. All right. God don't need us to prove that he's real. We just need to live a life that reflects who he is. And if we live a life that reflects who he is, folks will know he's real. He's real. Okay? I guess I ain't going to do my message because I'm still on my soapbox. <laughs> but I just want us to understand that this is a serious situation. Uh -huh. This situation is not just a health situation, it's an economic situation because it's causing situations where folks are now um, not working. Uh -huh. uh, those, that, those of us that, that like to challenge folks financially about who's going to win a football game or a basketball game, uh, we have no opportunity to get that little extra money that we, try, that we usually get about this time of year during uh, what is it called? March Madness. March Madness. <laughs> I heard folks cussing on the radio. Not officially, but they was hot when they, NCAA said we're not doing March Madness. They was flaming. Because you know you get your little bracket and everything and you, you bet, you know, you put the money in the pool and all that other stuff. You know, you ain't going to have that opportunity this time. Not only that, there's some folks that are not going to be able to be employed because they work in the sports industry. And so I know of, there's a couple of, of owners who've actually said, if you were scheduled to work that game, we're still going to pay you your salary. Now, there are, some, there are some owners that have said that. But this is a time where stress is going to be increased. Especially if you have some type of health condition that they say makes you susceptible to this virus. So this is, this is where I am. Because when we talk about don't fear, we are saying don't allow your judgment to be clouded. We trust in the Lord. Right. And we trust in his provision for us to do what he said he's going to do. He says, I won't leave you. I won't forsake you. I'll be with you. Whether you're on the top of the mountain, whether you're low in the valley. He's, uh, David even said, if I make my bed in hell, you even there. No matter where I go, he's with us. We have to have that confidence. We cannot allow fear to cause us to give up our hope. Right. Because hope is what causes us to go forward. Hope is what propels us to trust and have confidence in who God is and what he's doing in our lives. So we're not going to tempt the word and say, I'm going to prove that I'm saved and I'm going to go to wherever they say the coronavirus is and go hang out just to prove that God's going to keep me from catching the coronavirus. We don't play that nonsense. That is nonsense. We trust that God is going to keep us. God's going to uh, maintain our level of health. But there's some things that we have to do to this body to ensure that it's healthy. Number one thing that we need to see, I don't on my health kick now. Okay. Number one thing that we need to do to, to, to keep our body healthy is get us some sleep. Okay. Sleep is the most important thing. Now, some of us need 10 hours of sleep. Some of us need six hours of sleep. Whatever amount you need, get your behind in the bed, turn off your cell phone, okay. turn off the TV, and take yourself to sleep. Did I say behind twice? I, I, okay, if, if you're offended, I, I don't apologize. Get your behind in the bed. All right, and go to sleep. Go to sleep. Um, my, my, um, my son and, and his wife, when they really want, the, want my grandboys to go to sleep, they give them a uh, gummy of, of uh, what's that stuff? Melatonin. Go on, them boys be snoring so hard, I could go in there and slap them. They wouldn't even know I slapped them. I don't, listen, I don't slap my grandbabies. But I'm just saying, they go to sleep. They go to sleep. And, and, and sometimes when they know they're really tired, they be like, can I get a gummy? You know, so that they know that it allows them to get that restful sleep. Do the things that let your body, God designed your body to be regenerative. 
and it regenerates while you are sleeping. Get to sleep. If you're going to binge watch, get you to sleep first, all right? Do something so that you can take care of yourself. The next thing that I want to tell you, eat healthy stuff. You got to put some healthy stuff in your system. Now, 10 years ago, I wouldn't even be talking about this. I just believe, I believe that meat and potatoes was the only thing healthy you need to eat. And if you had anything green, it was for decoration on your plate. All right? My mindset has been changed because I got a little older. You need to put some things in your food. You need to eat with a balance. You need to ensure that you are uh, taking some vitamins. You need to make sure that you're doing things to allow this wonderful thing that God has designed for you operate at optimum levels. The temple. The temp, there we go, the temple. You got to take care of the temple, all right? We have to make sure that we do the right things. The other thing that I want to talk about, drink some water, all right? I ain't talking about no soda. I ain't talking about coffee. I ain't talking about tea. I'm talking about, like the water boy said, H2O. All right? H2O, drink some water because you have to take care of your body. If you go outside, put on a jacket, even if it's for a second, take care of your body. All right? Are y'all with me? Mm -hmm. Okay. I know y'all want to hear about the second part of Ephesians, the second chapter, but this is just something that has been on my mind throughout this week. I have some pastor friends that are, you know, <clears throat> that are, you know, trying to balance delivering the word to the people and also the feedback they're getting from the people is, is you know, some folks are, are, are scared. They're scared. And um, to try to encourage someone in the midst of what they're hearing outside of the church sometimes can be a, a daunting task because they hear that more often than they hear what the church is saying. But I want to tell y'all that eat right, get some sleep, drink water. Oh, the other thing, make sure that when you're eating, that you make sure that you're eating a carbohydrate, make sure that you have a protein, make sure that you're eating a balanced meal. Because anytime you start doing things out of balance, your body starts compensating and causing complications. So if we just make sure that everything that we eat, everything that we put in here has a balance to it, then we should be okay. My first priority, because it's still running through my mind, get you some sleep. All right? I remember when I was coming up, they said, you just sleep when you're dead. And we'd be up and... Four o'clock, be go lay down. I'm gonna lay down for thirty minutes, cause and then I'm gonna go on to go on to work. <laughs> and and would do would go do PT and run and all that other stuff, and then stay up for another fifteen, sixteen hours on three hours of sleep. That's why we got sleep apnea now. Body don't even know how to rest. So we got to do the things that will take care, help us to take care of our bodies, so that we can be the examples that God is calling for us to be. The thing that just ran through my mind, I think I'm going to stop after this. The thing that just ran through my mind is the children of Israel, because they have been acting up, God sends in correction. He sends in the correction, and what uh, Nebuchadnezzar would do is he would take all the smart people from that country and take them back to Babylon. And when he would take them back to Babylon, because he was trying to get everybody acculturated. He was trying to cause folks to feel like they were a part of the empire. And so he took all the young men, all those smart young men, and, and he took them and he put them through this process whereby they would work on his staff. And it talks about how they found this young man by the name of Daniel and his three friends. and. Daniel was like, well, I don't want to violate what the Lord has said, so can I only eat what the Lord has said for us to eat? And the guy that was in charge of them said, man, you're trying to get me in trouble. The king says, you guys need to eat this. He said, well, let's just do it for a week, and if, we are, you know, if we're okay, if we can still perform, 
can we, can we have this, this food? And it says, after those seven days, that the continence of Daniel and, and the three young men was better than everyone else. Because God designed us. If we eat the way God tells us to eat, eat balance, and we get rest, our body will perform. Mm -hmm. And so let's do it, okay? Let's do the right things. I know they're talking about, you know, uh, they're going to have to, might have to close schools and they, and they might, you know, folks are mad at, mad at our governor because he said we're only going to close the schools in the, in the counties where somebody has come up positive for the coronavirus. So now parents is going off on the governor. You just should close all the schools. But see, you're not thinking about the parent, the single mother who has to work and don't have no babysitter. And like I said, the school is her babysitter. You know what I'm saying? And I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean, that's just a reality. And now you, you saying the kids have to stay home and now she can't work and she don't have enough PTO in order, in order to take care of her kids and provide for them. So now you don't put her in a precarious situation. She's going to make her kids latch key. One, I'm going to go try to cook something on the stove, catch the house on fire. And then you're going to be mad because this single mother, house who done burnt down, and now Red Cross asking you to go ahead and, and uh, provide some type of help. And now you're like, well, why, why should you leave the kids by themselves? You see what I'm saying? <laughs> Let's be wise in how we do this. Let's be helpers of one another. We see someone that needs help. Also, let's provide them with help. Let's eat right. Let's take care of ourselves. Let's take care of ourselves. I was laughing because I was just like, this is, this is really one way for us to get people to, to wash their hands. I said, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just so devastated that we have to go to this extreme. We got to get a virus that, that is so deadly. And the, only, and the way that you keep yourself from getting the virus is to wash your hands. I wash my hands now like three times, four times a day now. I, every time I think about it, I just go in and... <laughs> and then after I wash them, you're allowed to tell you because we got this nice smelling sanitizer at the house. I go put that little... It's not, it's not blood orange, right? Yes. Oh, okay. What was I saying it was? Burnt. burnt orange. I was saying burnt orange. Because I, I like citrus, so I, I go in there after I wash my hands and I put that hand sanitizer on there because it just smells good. But anyway, my, my point is, do that. that's what you need to do. That's what you need to do. Wash your hands. Take care of yourself. Eat right. The biggest thing is get some rest so your body can rebuild itself so that you can be well. All right, I know this wasn't a traditional message, but it's just something that was on my heart and my mind because, uh, and I am going to post this, uh, because I just think it's something that just needs to be said. Because folks, is, I'm just going to believe in the blood of Jesus. I, I'm not telling you not to believe in the blood of Jesus. But we've got to be wise in how we conduct ourselves. All right? I'm, I'm going to hug everybody because I'm trusting in the Lord. Okay? Trust in the Lord all day. And, and when we come to your funeral, we'll, we'll, we'll say he trusted in the Lord. All right? <laughs> okay? Uh, and I'm, listen, I'm not cursing nobody. I don't, I don't want any of that stuff on, on the, on the um, YouTube site. I'm just saying be wise in our conduct. All right? Because folks are watching how you that say you are a Christian, how you're conducting yourself. And because they're watching how you conduct yourself, <coughs> conduct yourself accordingly. There's nothing that the CDC nor the World Health Organization said that is a violation of Christian ethics. Amen. Amen. They said, wash your hands, and for right now, don't sneeze on nobody, which is something you should never do. Right. If you sneeze or cough, cough into right. your elbow. Yeah. Right. I was like, that's what they used to tell us. Oh, okay. All right. So, if for those sick, of y'all that wasn't paying attention, away. do this. What? If you didn't have, if you didn't have a, na a napkin, not a napkin, a handkerchief or something to sneeze and cough into, they always told you to do it like this. Mm -hmm. All right? And I'm not, I'm not talking about dabbing or dapping. What is it called? Yeah. Dabbing. dabbing. Okay. See? I, I showed my generation right then, didn't I? If All you're right. sick, stay home. And if you're sick, stay home. And, um, okay, somebody just said don't send your sick kids to school. Because, listen, okay, I just kicked something else in my mind. 
the flu virus is still out there, y'all. Mm -hmm. So don't don't just get so focused on uh, the, the corona situation that you don't remember that the flu is still out there. That no one said don't stop taking your flu shots if you hadn't taken them for this season. We still got, but they're trying to think of a, of a, a vaccine. They're trying to come up with got, uh, one of the doctors, things I read said, he figures that it'll take another year to 18 months to even come up with the proper vaccine to cover it. So we got to do the right things. We got to take care of ourselves. We got to take care of one another. So if you notice when you walked in, you didn't get your usual hug, you got a hello. And if you got offended, uh, I'm not apologizing. They said don't hug nobody right now because we don't want to transmit this, okay? All right. Somebody said, thank you, Jesus, for right. no hugs. And I be know mindful some. of other people. And be mindful of other people. I was standing next to this man. That joker sneezed. And he just put it all out there. And I said, oh. Lord. Mm -hmm. I said, let me walk on over here. I mm -hmm. said, because I was getting ready to turn into Timothy real quick. Mm. Not Pastor Tim. Not Pastor Tim. <laughs> no, there wouldn't have been no Pastor I said. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, y'all just saw local pastor slaps man in the Walmart. No, so uh, just take care of yourself and watch watch your environments. Okay. Amen. All right. So um, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and bless y'all. We're going to call it a day. And uh, I just I know this wasn't a traditional message, like I said. I think it's something that needs to be addressed because we need to be uh, we need we, how do I want to say this we don't we don't want we don't want to be uh Trying to say this in a way that I know how I want to say it, but it, it's not it's not appropriate to say it that way. There are some there are some things that we need to do so that we can be an example to everyone else on how to do things. And not taking away from our ability or our confidence in that God can do what he says he's going to do, that God has already done that healing is a, a, around us. But my mindset is I'd rather not get sick than have to believe God for healing. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. I think that's the best way for me to say it. I'd rather just not get sick than have to, than have to trust God for healing. I, I don't know how many other folks think like that, but that's what I try to do the things like when I start getting a cold, I start taking some zinc and some other stuff to, you know, to help the cold not to hurry up and get out of my system because it's going, it's, it's going to get into your system. So that, that's my thing. I, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to go outside and just get a cold just so I can say, God, heal me. I want to do the things to, so that I don't even have to say that kind of thing. All right? Okay. Amen. All right. Thank you, lovely. Thank you, lovely. You're welcome.